This is the Glenn Beck Program. Welcome to Tuesday. Today's broadcast we have uh, primarily dedicated to um, preparedness for economic tough times. Now, uh, Bank of America has issued a report that said at the very uh, at the very least, transitory hyperinflation is coming. Okay, so let's just take them at their word. Not me, not anybody else, not any crazy Yahoo like me saying this. This is Bank of America. Uh, let's take them at their word. How do you prepare? There's lots of different ways, but you have to start thinking like uh, Germans did in the 1930s. There's a great book. I can't remember the name of it. I'll try to find it here before the end of the hour. But there's a great book out. It was a diary of a guy from Germany. Uh, and he he just wrote the, you know, the daily goings on. And it is phenomenal. He said one week, none of us had any idea what hyperinflation meant. The next week, everyone knew what it meant. And the smart people, uh, I should say half smart people, Smart people uh, went and they bought as much as they possibly could early on. So their family was stabled. The reason why I say they were half smart people is because they told people. And then, of course, when there's real uh, scarcity and you appear to have more than others, they come for you. So everything I am telling you today, uh, I would keep it to yourself. I would keep it to yourself. Just so you know, I'm not doing any of these things. I'm wildly unprepared. Uh, so, so the first thing, if you have zero money, I mean, you have nothing, what job are you doing and how valuable will it be in a bad, chaotic situation? Me, I only have my body to offer and no one's paying me to have sex, <laughs> I'm steak, okay? Very marbled steak. And I know that. It, it will be, it will, my job will be so short-lived. I will be, you know, everybody will be working and doing everything, and I'll be, I could tell you guys a story. Would you guys like to hear a story? No value in that. Okay, in Mad Max, did you see the storyteller? No, they ate him early on. All right, so what skill do you have? If your skill is not good in a, in a, you know, a, a bad situation, you might want to look at your hobbies. What are your hobbies? Again, the hobby that I'm starting to really be good at now is painting. Nothing, nothing. No one's going to say, hey, you want to paint a picture for me while we all starve to death or working out here plowing just for a stinking carrot? nobody's going to want a painting. So again, I'm steak. I realize that. Don't be steak. What hobby? What can you do? Can you fix cars? Can you learn to fix cars? Do you have any kind of building experience, farming experience? Do you know how the land even works? Can you sew and repair things? That, that's the first thing that you have to do is you have to find the value that you can offer. Because if you have, re and I'm talking about catastrophic breakdown, you need to be offering people something, skill, because we're all going to need to work together. Which brings me to my next topic. If you don't have a bug out bag, if you don't have a, a plan to go someplace, you probably should have one now. Uh, and may I highly recommend that you are in a town where it's like-minded people. They are good and decent. They have farming skills. They are used to, you know, living off of the land. They are spiritual in nature. Uh, and, uh, and they also believe in the Constitution. I'd find that community. And I'd either move there or I'd have plans on moving there. Uh, the other thing you can do is build a really good reference library. For instance, um, 
do you, do you know if if the drugstore breaks down? Do you know anything about medicine? Do you know anything about the plants around you that you can eat or can't eat? I'll be dead in three days. I'll be like, where's the cupcake? Where's sprinkles? Where's the cupcake store? I haven't seen a cupcake store. Where's the cupcake store? There's no cupcake stores here. So go forage for something. Ah, uh, hey, this looks yeah. <laughs> um, build a good reference library, and that includes all of the things that you should have. Every American should have all of the founding documents. All of the America. Think of something that is good and worthy. If you only had seven books, what would they be? Uh, then look for things. Um, can you get into communications? How will we communicate with each other? What are your communication skills? Um, do you have you know, any medical skills? Can you get any medical skills? Can you right now go get skills and don't ever tell somebody you're a doctor? Although I'm a doctor. Boy, won't that be ironic. <gasps> That's how I'll survive. I'm a doctor. He was very sick before I cut him open. Very sick. I, I didn't think he'd survive. <laughs> you, he had a heart problem. You took out his stomach. Oh, well, his stomach had to be removed. I'm telling you that right now. Uh, don't, tell you, don't tell anybody you were a police officer or a doctor or you'll be... You'll be dragged into service. Now, here's something else. You are looking for things, and I'm talking about people who are the average person that doesn't have... I'm, well, I'm talking to my broker this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Uh, we're going to play around at 9 or 12, and uh, we're, we're going to <laughs> talk about stocks and stuff. I'm talking about the average person, okay? Get out of debt as much as you can. Buy something that is of value, a car, even if it's not a fancy car, just a car that works and a car you could prepare, you could repair. When you have nothing, remember others will have nothing as well. Toilet paper comes to mind. Oh no, Glenn Beck is, he's starting a rush on toilet paper. Toilet paper is going to be Eight dollars a sheet soon. Yeah, it probably will be, but not because I said something. Uh, toilet paper, uh, razor blades, painkillers, uh, you know, over-the-counter medicines, lip balm, diapers, baby wipes, condoms, bar soap, deodorant, shampoo, all of that stuff. If things get really bad and really expensive, wait a minute, you're a farmer, you, you have some corn? Well, you haven't had anything but soap for dinner for a while. I'll trade you some soap for some corn. You're looking for things that you can trade people for. Also, I think a very good investment is ammunition. Let me say that again. Ammunition would be a very good investment. Uh, we have a couple of stories uh, on that uh, coming up. Also, uh, coffee. Alcohol. People don't think this way, but if people can't afford something, and let's say, I can't relate to this, you're an alcoholic, I need alcohol. Even if you're not an alcoholic, right now in today's world, I need alcohol. <laughs> Lots of it. Kids, don't waste your alcoholism on years where the problems aren't that big you're gonna <laughs> need that alcohol someday as homer simpson says oh. uh, alcohol the cause of and solution to all of the world's problems <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. right he's exactly right mm -hmm. coffee and tea sugar sweets chocolate think like your grandparents or your great-grandparents in the great depression I told Stu, I mean, I told Pat, he's like, oh, good year to start a, a cookie company. Actually, <laughs> cookies and chocolates and sugar will be one of the last things that people will stop buying because when the whole world sucks, you want something normal and you want a treat, and it could be just a bar of chocolate would I, be great. I've had his cookies, and I believe Kexi Cookie will be the last company standing in America. Yeah, see, uh, he, <laughs> even, he even has something. He's yeah. like, they're coming they're coming at us, Glenn, and he's like, they're coming for you, man. I'm the cookie guy. <laughs> well, you're describing here 
to interrupt a little bit. You're describing here a real, I mean, apocalypse type of situation here. This is I not. This so. is not. Hey, your prices are going up. Okay, I don't think this so. This is a world where like okay, civilization so is crumbling. Your prices are going up. Again, do not tell people you're doing this. Your prices are going up. Your prices are expensive today. If you're in transitionary or no, I'm sorry, uh, uh, transitory, transitory, transitory hyperinflation, hyper mm -hmm. your price of your food, uh, your corn or whatever, is going to go up. I am doing stuff on my house. I bought the stuff that I knew I was going to use. I wasn't using it to barter or anything else. I bought it right now. That's the key. Buy things that you know you're going to need and use, and you know that it might come down before you use it all, but it's better to have it than having to go buy it when it's a bottle of shampoo that used to cost you $3 is now $5 and you think might be $17. Buy it now. The things you can do is cut your spending where you can, and buy the things that you know you're going to need. If it's if it's transitory hyperinflation, great. That means things. <laughs> Try to say this with a straight <laughs> face. It means things go back to normal. Great. So try to do everything you can to cut out your expenditures for the next eight months. Buy the things that are going up. Detergents, bleaches, bleach is going to go through the roof. Um, if you're looking for anything of building a house, it's going to go through the roof. Think about what the government is spending. They're doing things for the Green New Deal. So everything in a house, everything with a grid, everything electricity, any copper is going to go through the roof. Because the government is going to spend billions buying a bunch of it. That leaves very little for you. Also, one last thing. Don't dismiss this. My grandfather taught me, you know, he lived through the Great Depression. And he said, you know, people laughed, people laughed, people laughed. He said, we didn't have the money to invest in the stock market. He said, but everybody was trying to get rich. Everybody was borrowing against things they didn't really own. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. The people who were rich, really rich, they were the ones that had money because they didn't play the game of let's get wealthy quickly. They just kept and they bought things when things began to fall apart. You buy things of intrinsic value. Think as un think as as unlike the average American as you possibly can. Think about tomorrow. Think about what you need tomorrow. Buy things when you can and store them. And don't work on that don't don't pull from that storehouse until you really need to pull from it. Just keep adding to the storehouse. You buy you go grocery shopping. Just add to that.